So we're going to have a look at how to name the halogenoalkanes. And these are a class of organic compounds that contain a halogeno functional group. And what is that? Well, it just means I've got a halogen or a group 17 element uh, bonded to some point on my organic molecule. Now, the prefix for these halogenoalkanes is going to depend on which group 17 element we have. So, for example, if it was a fluorine atom, we would begin the name with fluoro, chlorine atom would be chloro, and so on. And for reference, let's include our little table of stem names, which tells me about the number of carbons in my main chain. Right, some examples. Here's the first one. Well, what have we got? We've got a fluorine sticking off the side, so it's definitely a halogenoalkane. Uh, let's count the number of carbons in the main chain. I've got one, two. So the stem part of my name is going to be ETH. So let's write that down, ETH. And these names all end exactly the same as alkanes do. So ethane is going to be at the end of my name. The fluorine bit then, well, let's put a bit of information. If I number my carbons, one and two, technically my fluorine is on the first carbon, so I could call it one fluoroethane. That's one word. However, in this case, if I switched my fluorine over to the other side, I would simply name my carbons or number my carbons the other way around. It's still on the first carbon. So actually, technically speaking, we don't need that number in the name. Second example, here we go. What have we got this time? Well, we've got two chlorine atoms bonded to my molecule. Let's count the number of carbons again. I've got one, two carbons, that's gonna be ETH. There's the stem part of my name, so I know I'm gonna have ETH and it's gonna end just like the first example with AIN. Now in this case, I've got two chlorines. Uh, so let's number my carbons so we can give specific details about where they are. Well, I've got a chlorine on number one carbon and I've got a chlorine on number two carbons. And because I've got two chlorines in my molecule, I don't just write one, two chloroethane. I need to write one, two dichloroethane. And that di there just makes it absolutely clear that on my molecule there are two chlorines and the numbers indicate exactly where they are. Example number three, what have we got this time? We've got two bromines. Uh, let's number or identify how many carbons there are. Again, it looks like there's two carbons there. So again, the stem part of my name is gonna be ETH and the end is going to be AIN just like before. And in this occasion, well, let's first of all um, number my carbons, one and two. And in this case, they're both both bromines are on my first carbon. However, I still need to write down two numbers because there are two bromines. So I'm going to write 1, 1, dibromoethane. So those two numbers tell me which carbons they're on. The di, again, tells me there's two bromines there. Uh, hopefully not too difficult. Fourth example. Okay, what's my halogen this time? I've got an iodine bonded to my carbon. Uh, let's count the carbons in my main chain. I've got one, two, three, four. So this time we're looking for that stem name of bute. So I can write at the end of my name, bute ain. Uh, and in this case, well, if I numbered my carbons left to right, one, two, three, four, the iodine's on the third carbon. However, we always want to number our carbons with my functional group as close to the beginning of the chain as possible. So actually, what I need to do is number my carbons from right to left, which puts the iodine on the second carbon. So we're going to have two iodobutane, and that should be just one word there as well. Final example then. Oh, what have we got here? We've got quite a lot going on. Uh, I've got three fluorines. Uh, what's, let's find the longest chain where I find those functional groups. I've got one, two, three. So the stem part of my name is going to be prop, prop. So let's write prop and then ain comes at the end. And we've got a, quite a bit of information here. So first of all, let's deal with our fluorines. Well, if I number my carbons, it doesn't matter which way round I do it, left to right or right to left. They're on carbons number one, two, and three. So I'm gonna have one, two, three, there are three fluorines in this case, so I need to put trifluoro. However, that's actually not the end of my name because there's something else sticking off my molecule there. 
what have we got? We've got a methyl group sticking off the second carbon. So additionally, before my propane bit, let's tell a little bit more information about that other carbon. Well, I've got second carbon and I've got a methyl group sticking off the side. So quite a bit going on there, uh, but hopefully with a bit of practice, not too difficult. And that's pretty much it for the halogenoalkanes. Hopefully this video was of some help.